Good evening. Welcome to our PDST Primary STEM webinar on play-based maths and science. My name is Sarah Keane and I will be joined by my colleagues Roisin McGovern, Darren Shields and Orla Byrne. This webinar will last approximately 40 minutes. We hope you can stay with us for the duration of the webinar, but it will be available to access after our live broadcast. You'll find it on our website www.pdst.ie forward slash primary stem. If you'd like to tweet during our live broadcast, our Twitter handle is at PDST Primary STEM. This webinar will be an interactive session. Our primary STEM team are on hand to answer any questions you may have. If you have any questions regarding the content of this webinar, the Ask a Question feature is shown on this slide. This feature is accessible via the speech bubble icon on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Please remember to include your email address on the form if asking a question, as our response will be sent to the email address you provide. Play is so important to children's well-being that the right to play is set down in the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child and is one of the fundamental principles in early childhood education. The principles of learning in the primary school curriculum outline the importance of all aspects of play. Ashtar, which is now 10 years old, is the curriculum framework for children from birth to six years in Ireland. Ashtar supports teachers in developing partnerships between parents and practitioners, interactions, assessment and play. Although play is associated with the infant classes, a play-based approach can be used across the primary school. To quote George Bernard Shaw, we don't stop playing because we grow old, we grow old because we stop playing. This is very important if you have a multi-grade class especially. Play is still beneficial for over sixes if playful activities are differentiated, appropriately challenging, meaningful and varied. It is also a key part of active learning, which is a principle of the primary school curriculum. The primary language curriculum highlights the importance of adult-child relationships and playful and meaningful experiences for children's learning and development. Teachers are paramount in establishing a safe, collaborative and productive classroom climate that values play. In this webinar, we will watch video footage of how one school uses a playful approach for the teaching of maths and science across all class levels, from junior infants to sixth class. There has been a lot of discussion about learning in the science, technology, engineering and mathematics disciplines or STEM education as it has become more commonly known, both internationally and in Ireland. By one popular estimate, 65% of children entering primary school today will ultimately end up working in completely new jobs that don't yet exist. The Department of Education and Skills has developed a STEM strategy to support the development of STEM education up to 2026 across the whole system. Of course, the foundations for STEM education start in early years settings and primary schools. The role of STEM education is to help children and young people to be adaptable and open to new possibilities. STEM education is about enabling pupils to be inquisitive, to explore possibilities, to design and make, and to develop their problem solving and creative thinking skills in an active and collaborative way. In primary schools, it takes place in an integrated way across the curriculum. It obviously draws on science and mathematics, but can and should be a way to integrate learning across lots of other subject areas. Play-based learning, inquiry-led learning, and digital technologies all play an important role in STEM education. Some primary schools are prioritising STEM learning as one of their areas of focus for school self-evaluation as outlined in the most recent SSE update, update 13 from October 2019. This webinar will support teachers in teaching maths and science through teacher-directed playful activities in discrete maths and science time. It will also explore opportunities for pupils to initiate their own play in a child-led play session where maths and science are embedded in pretend, physical and creative play. The learning intentions for this webinar are as follows. Playful characteristics can be purposefully infused into the teaching and learning of maths and science across all class levels. Playful teaching involves planning for both teacher-directed and child-initiated play, as well as establishing a safe, collaborative and productive classroom climate that values play, 
Teachers must consider how they will interact with and assess pupils during play-based learning. One of the key messages from this webinar is that teachers need to establish a safe, collaborative and productive classroom climate that values play. Firstly, let's explore what is play. Play is about developing skills, fostering dispositions through a range of experiences, planning, exploring and making, building relationships, solving problems, enjoying learning. Play is not a separate subject, a time filler, only about the end product, the opposite of work, just playing, just providing practical activities or games, or just something you do in junior and senior infants. In the infant classes, opportunities to be playful extend beyond a suggested daily hour of child-initiated play. In this video of a multi-grade class of junior infants to first class, you will see how a teacher infuses playfulness into maths and science using the story of the gingerbread man as a stimulus. Playful teaching approaches can happen throughout the day in an infant classroom. Using a story as a stimulus is a great way of integrating numerous subjects. I have my gingerbread man here and I've got a little tub of water. What yeah. will happen if I put this gingerbread man into the water? Will you yeah. whisper with your buddy first? Yeah. Give a whisper. See what your buddy thinks. Yeah. What do you think? I'm going to break up. You think it's going to break up. Okay, so let's see. What do we think if I'm going to put this gingerbread man into the water? It will melt. Let's see. Leah. Um, it'll go all soggy and it'll break up into little bits. It you think it's going to go soggy and nice. break up into little bits? Tiernan, what do you think is going to happen? I think all of the chocolate is going to come off. You think the chocolate will come off? And I think what do you think? Uh, it's going to go soggy and a small, tiny little pieces. It's going it, to, be it's gonna be oh. and mm. it's it's going to fall open. apart. It's going and we'll get take... smaller and smaller and smaller. You think it's going to sh <coughs> What's that word? Shrink. 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 Boys and girls, if he stays at the top of the water, what's that called? Floating. Floating. If he goes to the bottom? Sinking. Here, the teacher focuses the pupil's attention on the gingerbread man sinking. The container will be left visible in the classroom so the pupils can observe any changes. Watch it for today to see if anything else happens. So first of all, when he went into the water, what was he doing, Matthew? Floating. Floating. After a bit, what did he do? Sinking. He's sinking. So we'll see if anything else happens for the rest of the day. I have 10 cubes down there. Right? And many hundred. But I had... I was in here this morning and I was counting out my 10 cubes and I was, I was a little bit tired last night, I didn't sleep great. So will you make sure to count them, yeah. that there are 10 in your set? Yeah. How could we help him cross the river? How could we help the gingerbread man cross the river? Yeah. Hannah, what do you think? And we could get like a kayak. We could make a kayak. A kayak. Would that be a great a idea? Yeah. Yeah. Or a speedboat. So, Brona, what are you going to pick? Because there's no holes in it. No holes in it. And if there was, it would sink. But if you, if there was, you could cover them with something, but it wouldn't be paper because they would sink through paper. Oh, the water would come through the paper, is it? Soak up through it. Interesting. Okay. We'll have to, you'll have to break it off a bit now, you see, because if it'll be too big, it won't float into the little container. So, the design and make process involves science and maths in a very meaningful way. And when children get the opportunity to plan out what they're going to build, it's a way for the children to communicate with each other, to see if they're on the same page as regards their uh, construction. And it's also a way for children to perhaps find out the flaws that may happen with the design. Design! Oh, that's very good. There's another word for it. We're going to make a... Blue blue print. blueprint. And a blueprint is a very fancy word for what? And like your plan. Yeah.
Yeah, your plan. Yeah. Take this on as a staircase. And make a roll in and tie it on, yeah. And a ginger bread. Yeah. That's a spare boat. Yeah, here's yeah. going to be a spare boat. Show me your design. I'm, I'm doing the Titan. The Titanic. You're doing the Titanic yeah. here. Yeah, and when this is this thing, then that and that, well, that will come up. Then it will this will pop. Oh, up. so if this sinks, this is going to save it. I'm making a submarine. A submarine? Yeah, but this cuts a hole in it and this cuts a hole. Oh, so what if it has a hole in it? Sink. How did you know that? Pupils collaboratively make the boat for the gingerbread man based on their designs. As they do this, the teacher continues to interact with the pupils but also photographs their work. You will also notice the pupils have an opportunity to use digital technology as a form of self assessment. <gasps> What's happening? Sing. Oh no! no! The gingerbread man is leaning on that side, so it's the bottom over that side. Is that why it's going oh, to There's too much weight. Sailing! And tell me, is there anything, if you were doing it again now, is there anything you'd do differently? Uh, yeah. What would you do differently? We'd, um, I tried to spread out the bottle so it wouldn't really be tipping over and um, I'd, um, we'd stick it on tighter, the Titanic bit. Okay, so you're trying to make the bottom of the boat a bit wider, is it? Yeah. As you've just seen, the teacher used the story of the gingerbread man as a stimulus for the lesson. The use of the story as a trigger provided a child-friendly platform for the pupils to be mathematicians and scientists. There were also integration opportunities for many subject areas. A playful approach was evident throughout the lesson. Through the teacher design task, the children had an opportunity to explore and develop maths and science skills and content in a playful context. Positive dispositions were fostered in children's collaboration throughout the lesson. Dispositions are enduring habits of mind and action including independence, curiosity, playfulness, perseverance, confidence, resilience and resourcefulness. The class teachers' interactions were of paramount importance in facilitating discussions. Open-ended questions is an essential aspect of this. The focus of the assessment was on the child's learning progress. The class teacher assessed what the children were learning, content and skills, as well as how the children were learning, such as their dispositions. As we have already mentioned, playfulness can be infused into learning across all class levels. In the following video, you will see a teacher in a multi-grade 5th and 6th class infuse playfulness into maths and science. A stimulus, playful approach, maths and science skills and content fostering dis positive dispositions interactions and assessments were explored in the junior classroom footage. Keep these in mind as you watch the following video in the senior classroom. To introduce the theme and engage the pupils, the teacher uses photographs of towers from all over the world. These act as a trigger for the overall theme. The teacher revisits the images to focus the discussion on the design of the towers. What do you notice about their construction? Risha? They're both very narrow. Narrow? Um, the, they both start really wide and go, go up and they get skinnier. Excellent. As you can see, it's leaning. What angle? We were doing our angles last week. What angle do you think, when it's built originally, when they were constructing it, what angles did they build it at, do you think? 90 degrees, good girl, a 90 degree. What would you call the building when it's going straight down to the ground like that? What's a vertical? When it meets the ground, what is it? So what would you call that? Right angled and? Perpendicular. Perpendicular, well done. It's leaning off by nine, 10 degrees. What do you think that angle would be now? It's an acute angle, brilliant, and 80 degrees, fantastic. Approximately 80 degrees, well done. 
The teacher explains the challenge to the pupils. In groups, pupils must design and make a freestanding tower or structure to hold a small stuffed animal. The structure must be as tall as possible. Pupils explore the materials as part of the design and make process. They discuss their ideas. Can we do slanted or straight? Straight. Definitely straight. Straight. And then we can go. Definitely vertical. It has like the wider base than like. It's gonna hold. Yeah, we have actually more. It should hold more. What is your idea? If we can't do pews, then what else can we do? Yeah. Use less tape. We can see the tape. Before we get to the top, we have design. It kept collapsing. It kept collapsing, so you redesigned it. Yeah, we Pupils have a context in which to use their measurement skills. Broken rulers are provided to challenge them. Most of them are the same weight. Managers So they're kind of similar weights, aren't they? So I think, one second. And those are here for your kids. Like in all good um, uh, trials and in science, it's all trial and error and often it doesn't work out. So what I value in the classroom is that the children will make mistakes that um, the process is more important than the actual end product. The children love to see an end product, but actually what I'm looking at is the actual process and that the children will learn and reflect on that process. The pupils record their work in their digital portfolio. This is a self-assessment tool, but will also inform the evaluations of their designs. We took a picture of our tower and we just edited it to put our names and what we were doing. Evaluating took place throughout the task as some groups recognised the need to modify their original plan. Here, at the end of the lesson, pupils evaluate their own work and that of their peers. They propose positive modifications. The primary science curriculum describes designing and making as a process which draws on the whole curriculum and should be developed in association with and through visual arts, science and mathematics. The design and make process involves exploring, planning, making and evaluating. In this digital story, you will see how fairy tales, nursery rhymes, picture books, novels and special occasions can all act as wonderful stimuli for design and make activities. By using contexts that pupils are familiar with, they are transported into a problem-solving adventure Consider how you might adapt the following activities to develop maths and science content and skills for the pupils in your class. Games with Rules are a teacher-directed playful opportunity for learning. They provide a platform for pupils to develop their maths and science knowledge, skills and language in a playful way. When choosing Games with Rules, consider the following. What maths and science content is in the game? Does the game help develop maths and science skills? Are there opportunities for the children to use the language of maths and science? A play-based approach to maths and science can incorporate digital technology. Apps, online games and robotic devices such as BeeBots and Lego WeDo kits are just some examples of the playful use of digital technology. The following footage will show pupils in a multi-grade class from 2nd to 4th 
playing with bee bots while developing their maths and science skills. Many education centres have resources such as bee bots and Lego We Do kits available for schools to borrow. Show me where you're starting there. and where are you ending. Okay, so start and give me the directions. So will you record the directions that she's doing it, please? Through skillful questioning, the teacher uses BeeBots to develop pupils' positional language, spatial awareness and sequencing skills. Forward six. And then? Forward. So what are the two big numbers? Six and? And what's the small number? So what's your sum, everybody? So what's six and three? Let's do it, six and three? Nine, nine. nine. count back. Eight. And what do you get? Using technology such as BeeBots is a playful opportunity to consolidate number operations. What direction will you go? Forward. Forward how many? Go da. Um, go. Three. Off you go, Sorocco. As well as playful teaching throughout the day, Astra promotes up to an hour of child-initiated play in the infant classes. Astra's planning framework for play is very useful in supporting teachers in planning the time, space, resources and intended vocabulary that can be embedded in child-led play. Many teachers plan in a thematic way, integrating numerous subject areas. This encourages pupils to use the language their teacher may have explicitly taught them previously. Research has shown that a word should be used in meaningful contexts between 10 and 15 times before it becomes embedded in a child's vocabulary. As well as exposing pupils to maths and science vocabulary during a discrete lesson, pupils need the opportunity to use this vocabulary in context. In the following child-initiated play session, you will see how children have the opportunity to use their maths and science language in the context of their play. The role of the teacher in facilitating, interacting and assessing the pupils during play is extremely important. While child-led play is influenced by the resources in each play area, pupils have the freedom to initiate the direction of their play. The pupils are given time to plan. No, Joyce, what are you making here? I'm making a campfire. Oh, campfire! And Matthew, what about you? I'm making the top table. Boys, I can see some great shapes in there. What shapes can you see? Uh, uh, what do you get? Triangle. Where is it? Uh, Triangle. Triangle. What do you see, Matthew? Uh, 2D. 2D. What 2D shape do you see? Uh, here. Yeah, what's that? Now, if you put the ball, the bottle down on the water, what's it going to do? Sink. How do you know? Float. It's going to float. Should be. What's it doing? Floating. Can you show me anything that's doing the opposite of that? What's that doing? It's sinking to the bottom, it is. Miss I'm going to make the square stand up. How would you make a square stand up? Oh, show me what you're going to do there. What are you making it into, Rona? A 3D square. A 3D square. What's a 3D square called? Cube. Oh, well, oh, that 3D square is cute. What is she doing? Measuring me. Why? Okay, so she's measuring you. By leaving maths resources available to the pupils, they have an opportunity to use maths as part of their pretend play. Before the pupils tidy up, they use digital technology to capture their play. Some days I will observe pupils using a range of assessment methods. These include post-it notes, photos, checklists, voice recordings, videos, the list goes on. We always start our play sessions with a plan and review it afterwards. This gives pupils an opportunity to self-assess what they have learned through their play. 
This could involve talk and discussion, show and tell, or photos, audio clips and videos. As we mentioned previously, teachers are fundamental in establishing a safe, collaborative and productive classroom climate that values play. Asher highlights the importance of the teacher's role in ensuring high quality learning through play. Asher's guidelines and interaction on interactions promote a reciprocal sharing of power between teachers and children. Sometimes the teachers lead the learning and sometimes children lead. Teachers cannot control what children do during child-led play, but they can encourage purposeful play by carefully planning a variety of creative, physical and pretend play areas that may align with the same theme, giving the pupils a context to use their vocabulary. During play, the teacher can interact meaningfully by being a co-player, thinking out loud, modelling language and using open-ended questions and statements. Often children may go off plan, but this does not mean that learning is not happening. Remember, play is not just about developing pupils' knowledge, but also their skills and dispositions. As teachers, we are continually assessing children's learning. Assessment is part of our day-to-day -day interactions with our pupils and is often intuitive. Gathering assessment itself, while important, is not the end of the process. We have to decide how to use the information to plan for the next steps in learning, Seeing children as active participants in assessment and recognising and acknowledging that children themselves play a vital role in the process. Reflecting on the videos you've watched in this webinar, the teacher's focus of assessment was on the pupils' learning progress as they engaged in play-based maths and science activities. The class teachers assess what the children learned, such as content and skills, as well as how they were learning. Their dispositions such as curiosity, concentration, independence, persever perseverance, resilience and resourcefulness. Recording this assessment could be done in a variety of ways. Examples include post-it notes, checklists, audio clips, photos and videos during child-initiated play, or pupils' learning logs and digital e-portfolios during teacher-directed play. The purpose of assessment is not just to collect information to have it on record, it is about reflecting on pupils' progress and informing future learning. The Taking the Next Steps and Reflection Space on the Discover Primary Science and Maths template is a suitable place for assessing pupils' learning. It encourages both teachers and pupils to self-reflect on the process and consider how they can apply what they have learned. Astra's planning framework for play supports teachers in planning a child-led play session in a thematic way providing pupils with an opportunity to engage in pretend, physical and creative play. It prompts teachers to plan the explicit language in English and maths, but other vocabulary such as that developed in science can obviously, obviously be included in this plan. This template also offers teachers opportunities to plan for curriculum integration and reflect on learning through play. We will now reflect on what this webinar has explored. We have focused on the teaching of maths and science through teacher-directed playful activities in discrete maths and science time. It also explored opportunities for pupils to initiate their own play in a child-led play session where maths and science are embedded in pretend, physical and creative play. The learning intentions for this webinar were as follows. Playful characteristics can be purposefully infused into the teaching and learning of maths and science across all class levels. Playful teaching involves planning for both teacher-directed and child-initiated play, as well as establishing a safe, collaborative and productive classroom climate that values play, teachers must consider how they will interact with and assess pupils during play-based learning. This webinar will be available to access after tonight's live broadcast on our website. If you visit pdst.ie, you will find our PDST STEM homepage pdst.ie forward slash primary STEM easily. The primary STEM team has published a number of resources to support teachers in engaging pupils in rich mathematical experiences across the curriculum. PDST mathematics handbooks and resources are available on the PDST website and can be downloaded for free. Keep an eye out for upcoming resources in maths and science. Our Twitter handle is at PDST primary STEM. Skullnet.ie is the Department of Education and Skills official portal for Irish education. 
Skullnet.ie collaborates with practising primary and post-primary teachers to maintain and manage the content on the website. Teachers have the option to upload and share their own resources to the site. Before we take questions, we want to reiterate the many supports available to schools in the areas we've looked at. PDST Primary STEM Advisors are available to further support teachers and schools with developing a play-based approach to maths and science through school support. If schools apply for sustained support, they may receive a series of visits from an advisor to create a shared vision and timeline for teacher CPD within their own school context. Principals can apply for this support on the PDST website. In order to apply, you need the school roll number. The password for applications this year is School Support 2019. Thank you to all those who have sent in questions and engaged with us on Twitter tonight. Our first question is, how can we communicate the value of play as a methodology to parents? Uh, that's a great question and one that teachers definitely need to consider. It's really important that teachers communicate the value of play to parents so that they understand that learning is actually happening and how this learning could be further supported at home. This could be done in a variety of ways, possibly a newsletter, a school website or blog, social media or a digital portfolio that's shared with parents. The NCCA also have a really good tip sheet about supporting play at home on their website and we'll add it to the resource list for this webinar. Thank you, Sarah. Our second question is, where can I find ideas for games with rules? Roisin, would you like to take this question? Of course. Thanks, Orla. Our maths manuals have many games with rules. We also have a resource list for this webinar on our website where you will find some suggestions for science. This is a working document, so you, we will continue to add to it. If you have any ideas to share, please feel free to tweet or email us. Thank you, Roshi. So for our final question, I teach junior and senior infants. I'm concerned about the time allocation for each subject. How do I address this if I want to teach in a more integrated and playful way? Darren, will you take this question? No problem, Orla. Yep, yeah, that's another great question. Um, I suppose the primary school curriculum highlights how children learn best in an, in, in an integrated way. We're familiar with the suggested time frame, but on the page on page 69, the page before the time frame, it states this requires a particular approach to teaching and learning and will entail a more flexible use of the suggested time frame. As, a, as outlined already in the webinar, using the Discover Primary Science and Maths framework can be a useful way to promote integration across all class levels uh, in the school through play. While STEM is not an explicit subject in the primary school curriculum, Looking for ways to integrate maths and science content, skills and language by using this framework is a good start and will hopefully help you maximise how you integrate maths and science in the future. Thank you, Darren. Thank you for engaging with tonight's webinar. We would like to thank our colleagues in the webinar studio, particularly Sean Dower for all his assistance with creating this live broadcast. We would also like to acknowledge the invaluable advice given by our colleagues on the primary STEM team. We especially want to thank the pupils and staff of O'Callaghan's Mills National School in County Clare for showcasing their playful approach to the teaching of maths and science. And finally, we would like to thank all of you who engaged with tonight's webinar. We hope you enjoyed it. Ihewa.